Rumours have been flying and swirling around the internet for ages about Shimano's next generation Dura-Wraith DI2 group set and whether it should be wireless. Now we haven't seen any prototypes in the Pro Peloton this year. It's been a bad season for racing, let alone new product scoops. But some new patterns unearthed this week reveal a bit more detail and reveal that Shimano might be about to cut the wires on its flagship group set for the very first time. So here's what we know and the question that we need to ask and answer, do we really need or want a wireless Shimano group set? So let's dive in. So over on the Cycling Tips website this week, they found a load of patterns by Shimano that showed a Japanese company is clearly working on a wireless group set. That's no great surprise really. Mostly big bike companies work on products years in advance and Shimano is notorious for filing loads of patents for different ideas that never see the light of day. But there's good reason to suspect these patents aren't red herrings. Now Shimano DI2 group set has been hugely popular since it launched way back in 2009. I remember all the naysayers saying it wasn't necessary and would never catch on. Well, they were wrong, weren't they? The tech has proven to be, bar a few isolated cases, very reliable and it's been hugely popular for the Japanese company. But it's still based on the same underlying technology despite evolving quite a bit since that first group set. Meanwhile, SRAM has proven the popularity of a wireless group set with its ETAP Axler group set being a hugely popular group set with bike brands specking on their bikes and customers upgrading their bikes to this new group set. And it is a totally wireless group set. There are no wires in sight at all. However, it's not the only solution for a wireless group set with the Avra approach being adopted by Italian company FSA with its semi-wireless WE group set launch a few years ago, which had the rear and front mech connected to a battery via wires and then the shifters were wireless to that system. So a different approach to SRAM, but both are wireless, although SRAM is a proper true wireless group set. So let's dive into these patents by Shimano then and see what's going on. The patents show us that Shimano is developing wireless tech, but it doesn't give us the final specs as there's clearly leeway in the designs it's showing, but it gives us an idea of the direction they are heading in. Let's start with the shifters, and I think we can presume quite safely there'll be small batteries in each shifter body, just like SRAM ETAP to power the shifters. SRAM's coin cell batteries last for ages, about a year or more, so you don't have to regularly charge them, and I don't see any reason why Shimano won't adopt the same system. It's proven, tried and tested technology, so I can't see any reason why Shimano wouldn't copy SRAM unless there's any patents they need to get around, but that's the issue with these designs. It's patents are a, a maze that the companies have to navigate to ensure they don't trip over a patent. The hoods are small and compact enough to easily hide a battery and the associated electronic gubbins inside without a big size increase, hopefully. Looking more closely at the front and rear mechs, it appears, like SRAM, they can have a battery integrated into each mechanism. That would require a fundamental redesign, especially the front mech, which is already quite bulky. And we're seeing clearance issues on two by bikes with wide all-road or gravel tires being an issue and SRAM have embraced this by moving their new force wide front mech outboard to give the extra clearance for bigger tires. The Avro approach, which we can see in the patterns, is having the front and rear mech connected by wires to a battery inside the frame to keep the rear mech and front mech nice and small and having that as a wired loop and then connected wirelessly to the shifters. That's what we've seen with FSA's Wii group sets. So that's a proven system and that could be a system Shimano favors. So what we're looking at are possibly two different wireless approaches. One looks like SRAM's ETAP and the other looks like FSA Wii. Now, which approach they go for comes down to what they think is the best engineering solution and also whether they think the customer has a demand or appetite for one system over the other. Now, Shimano have shown us in the past they favor the engineering approach and they don't really care or mind so much about what a consumer wants or expects. We saw this with Shimano's dual control mountain bike levers many years ago. A good engineering solution, but a major commercial flop. So Shimano have experience of putting a product out that they believe is best and the consumers not really liking it. So that's the challenge for them. It's developing what they think is the best engineering solution, but also one they know the consumers will buy and expect. And I think it's safe to say, correct me if I'm wrong, that most of you will want a fully wireless group set like SRAM with no wires or batteries inside the frame, all external. But whether that system can deliver the same performance as Dura DI2, which is a benchmark for the company, remains to be seen. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video around this subject, if you missed it, linked above, I spoke to a Shimano engineer many, many years ago, 
and they basically told me that until they can get wireless to the same level as wired in terms of shifting speed, they won't explore wireless. So getting the shifting speed the same as wired will be a fundamental pillar of this new group set. Being in a fortunate position to regularly test bikes with ETAP axis and DI2, you can tell a difference when it comes to shift speed. I mean, it's tiny, it's marginal at best, and some people might not notice it, but you can tell that ETAP is a tiny, tiny bit slower shift speed than DI2. But for Shimano, that would be critical to get that shift speed the same as DI2. I don't think they would accept anything less than DI2. So that would be a key focus for them. And I think that could push them down the semi wireless, having a rear mech, front mech, and a battery inside a frame, all connected by a wired system, and then remote from the shifters. So that could be a system they go for, unless they get a fully wired system as fast shifting at DI2. But that's just my hunch, I could be wrong. It'd be fascinating to see what they do come out with. But what do you prefer? Do you want a full wireless, or will you take a semi-wireless? Let me know down below. That's about all we can tell from the pattern, really. It doesn't give too much away, it just gives us an idea of what directions they are working in. It also reveals probably what we already know, is that would be a 12-speed group set, SRAM already at 12-speed, Campag at 12 and do a 13 with gravel, so 12 would be a natural step. And Shimano already has a 12-speed mountain bike group set and the brand new micro spline free hub you need for the extra sprockets and a smaller 10-2 sprocket. That's a key feature on most 12-speed group sets certainly from SRAM, and we've seen now with Campag's new 13-speed, well, that's a 9-tube, and that's tiny. So could we see that mountain bike technology ported over? Probably, I expect it, but the range of cassettes will be interesting. So the big benefit of a 10-tube sprocket, or 9-tube, as with Campag, is you put more of the range on a cassette and less focus on the chain set, and you have smaller chain rings for lower weight, and you spend more time in the big ring. However, we have seen in the Pro Peloton that SRAM sponsor riders I was trying to get around using a 10 tooth and using bigger custom chain rings. And we have to remember that Dual Race is a pro level, a group set designed for the pro riders, the pro racers, to meet their needs and demands. So meeting their requirements first and foremost will be critical to the new group set. But the problem, the challenge that Shimano have is that Dual Race DI2 is a hugely popular group set with people like you and I who can afford it, well, I can't afford it, but people who aren't pro, who aren't sponsored, who want the best group set on their road bike for leisure cycling. Where we're seeing a big increase in the popularity of wide and low range gears, especially with SRAM and gravel bike groups have been popular on all road endurance bikes now, to meet the competing demands of such different riders. Riders who go at 50K an hour all the time, and riders are doing half that speed. So Shimano has quite a tricky job on their hands, and I think we'll see some interesting solutions. Probably see a fairly wide spread of cassettes to cater for the extremes of pro riders and amateur riders. And I expect there will be a 10-2 sprocket, but hopefully I do an 11-2 sprocket. But let me know what you think about 10, 11, 9 sprockets down below. The last tiny nugget of interest from these patents is that Shimano appear to be supporting rim brakes going forward. So no fear of a disc brake only group set next year. And that makes sense. We've seen each of the three Grand Tours this year one of rim brakes, so it won't want to alienate that big crowd of rim brake supporters. So rim brakes, disc brakes, both should be covered with a new group set. But that's all I know so far from the patents. Interesting stuff. I'll put the links to the patents down below if you want to check them out yourself. But let me know what you think of the group set down below and what you want to see and whether you think wireless is a good thing or a bad thing, let me know down below. That's all for now. Um, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all again next time. Thanks for watching.